All right, there's nothing like a little spooky book to get you in the Halloween spirit. Lori Fazio from RJ Julia Booksellers is here now with some great choices. Woo! <laughs> so I don't read scary. Yeah, you I'm, may I'm have not a heard fan me say the I don't like to be scared in my own house. So yeah, I'm like, there's I'm just good. no reason. But I did pick books that our staff has read, and but Halloween is coming, and so you know I figured I'd bring a few things to talk about. Okay, a little um, eeriness has never hurt anyone. Okay? Yeah, but don't really ask me like the nitty gritty of it because I I I, I don't know. I'm you know I have yeah, to be sure. honest about yeah, that. All right. Um, so we will start with um, a the year of witching. And this is a, a fictional story. Um, Emmanuel has dark powers, and she lives in a, a puritanical town. And she is called the Forbidden Forest. She should not go, but she decides to go anyway. And when she does, a whole set of um, cursed reactions are set off in her very religious town. So she's got to figure out, all right, how do I save the people in the town that are, that are good? And she uses the priest's son as well and his powers, and the two of them have to figure out how to save everybody. Save wow. everybody in the town. Ooh. Yep. All right. Save the town. Okay. The year good. of wit the witchery. Witching. What is it? Yep. That, that's yep. The year, the year of, witching. of witching. This is by Alexis Henderson. Okay. Very it's good. It's in paperback, and it's it's a book that, like I said, our nice staff is very Nice and yep. scary. Okay. So the next one is called The Unidentified. This is actually nonfiction. This is people who like to read about real things that are scary or things that are yeah. supposed to be real. Right. Um, so the more that our map our maps of the world and places get filled in with things that we know. What they're saying is that people want to know about mysterious places. Yeah. So this is all about that. It's terrific. Yeah, it talks about, you know, graveyards and, you know, myths and things like that. Mythical monsters. Ooh. Yeah. So if you what's like, real, what's not. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you okay. want to if you want to like still um, under understand the mystery, go for it. Okay. Um, so Slewfoot, so it's, Brahm. It's a beautiful um, book. It really is a beautiful book. And the cover, I mean, you can just see. And, and they have some have his illustrations in here as well, which are beautiful, which are some of the characters in the book. So Brahm is known as an ancient, no, he is known as an American Gothic fantasy and um, author and illustrator. That's a, that's a lot to say. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm it. stumbling over that. Right. Scott and I were looking at this book, and it, it's, it's beautiful. One of the quotes is a lusciously dark tale of witchcraft and devilry, tailor made for lovers of folk horror and everyone who wants to live deliciously. It is really pretty. Yeah, and he, so he did Krampus, you know, one of the Krampus books, which some people know about. I'm not You'd probably recognize it. it if you look it up, you would see it sort of looks like a demon. Okay. Um, but his illustrations are, are beautiful. This takes place in Connecticut. Oh, it does take place in Connecticut. Mid 1600s. Oh, mid 1600s. Yep. And so Slewfoot is actually known um, by the wild folk as Father Slayer and by by the colonists as the demon or the devil. And so he's, you know, wreaking havoc in in the uh, According town. to his long hair is a tool of the devil. Why have you not considered cutting it short like the other women? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we are devilish. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and then lastly, so everyone knows your mother is a witch. So this <laughs> This has a, well, a thread of humor through it. It does. Well, that's, there is some truth to that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's loosely based on a real-life German um, witch trial. Oh, real life? Yep, in the 17th century. Can you believe this actually happened? I, I, it's, it's, it's still amazing to me. I actually you know, thought about going up to Salem and you know, yeah, getting in that whole thing this year, and then I said, I, maybe another time. But like my stepsister goes every year and loves it and loves to you know, get into all this. And, and it's fun to t teach kids the history of it, too. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. In, a, in a real way. So, yeah. all right. So we have a couple minutes just to talk about um, our book club. Right. So Apples Never Fall, Leanne Moriarty, the book club. So the, really the first uh, 17 chapters, which was the first assignment, we asked everybody to do that. It kind of gives you a glimpse into who our characters are. All right. So we know that we've got uh, Stan and Joy, who are the parents, and we know Joy goes missing. So right. we, we know that even from, from the beginning. From the beginning. And we know that Savannah is the person that was like a mystery guest that yeah, happened upon their house. Who's letting the mystery guests into their I house? I don't the, know, these but days, you know, there's got to be something a, a little bit more. They're, they have four children, mm. so we know that there is Amy, there's Troy, there's, um, what's his name? Oh, gosh, I wrote them all down. Logan and Brooke. Right. Two of them, although we don't know this yet, two of them think their dad has something to do with it, two of them don't. We don't know that yet, which is which. You're starting to kind of figure out. You know, which ones are leaning towards, oh, maybe dad is a suspect. Then you have the old tennis um, player, Haddad, who's writing in a tell-all, who he was coached by the father and then dropped him years and years ago. Oh. So does that have something to do with it? We don't know. 
We don't know. We don't know. We no. still don't Leanne know. Moriarty, who has a thing right now, if you're watching any of her great shows on Hulu and all that, then that's right. you're going to maybe love the it's story. It's a very, uh, it's a quick read. Like, you know, you get into it and before you know it, you're 10 pages in. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you know, you get hooked, and uh, I find it. It's right, because I think you I'm up to chapter the... six. I'm a little bit behind, so if you're behind I'm out behind there, I'm behind too. We're all okay. We're all okay. You have you have plenty of time to catch up. Yeah. But um, you know, I've I've been reading it like ten pages a night, fifteen, twenty pages a night before I go to bed. Which is great. And then I start thinking that they're real characters in my life the next day. Isn't that <laughs> oh weird when that well, happens? Well, that's when you get into a book, and then you're that's... like, when you have more time, you want to finish it. But you know, we want to let everyone know there is a Facebook group, so join it. And Scott and I can we can all talk about what we're thinking. So go to the Great Day. Connecticut uh, book club, right, Jamie? We just look, search under that. Yeah, Great Day Connecticut book club. Search that on Facebook and join the group. Everyone is welcome. And the next assignment. So okay. the next assignment is to read another 120 pages. So we left off. If you read all the what you were supposed, supposed to, to read, haha. Right. No, um, we were at 130. So read to page 230. 230. Yep, and we will know a lot more between 130 and 230, and then we can talk more. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lori. You'll find all these books at RJ Julia Booksellers on Boston Post Road in Madison or on Main Street in Middletown. And thanks, you get a 20% discount on that book if you ask and tell them you're part of the Better Club. Ooh, yeah.